So obviously, my name is Michael Smith and I work for Cotton Grass Service in Narrabri. Um, been dealing with moisture probes for uh, probably about seven or eight years now and it's predominantly been into cotton. Um, irrigated cotton is, is what we do um, and that's where the probes have been in the past. Uh, I think it was Colin a few years ago said to me, how can we expand the business and where else can we go? And I initially said, well, I've flooded the irrigation market, I've got nowhere else to put them. So we come up with a, well, chatting and talking about where can we put it, put it into the dry land market, and that's where the, the all in one, uh, the drill and drop came in. Um, so basically, I've got 20 hectares of dry land cotton trials in uh, Narrabri. So they range from varieties, different varieties, work configurations, picks, picks applications, the growth regulator, and all those sort of things. Um, so we decided to chuck the Centec moisture probes into um, different road configurations. So ultimately we plant cotton on meter roads. So we have um, three configurations that I've, I've trialled this in. Uh, it was solids, so that's a row every meter. We had one in, one out. So we had a row in, row out, row in, row out. And we also had uh, single skips which is two rows in, one out, two rows in, one out. So we want to look at the different moisture, the way that the moisture was pulled out in the skip row and in the plant line. Um, just pure interest, uh, the reason that we have the different configurations is because we want to basically save the moisture for when it's actually fruiting. So we don't want vegetative growth, so we want to save it up, up front, make it peak very hard early, and then use the extra moisture in the skip row to get good quality cotton. So as throughout the season, um, we, uh, let's move this over a little bit. I was talking to Colin so we, and we had this um, idea of the 2D graph. So we put one in the row and then one in the skip. And these, this is the, the type of thing that we get to see. So this first graph here on the left, this is obviously the money one out, and uh, it's full there in about January, early January, I think it is. Then, before a rainfall event, this is the second graph, and then we had an infiltration on the, like we had a rain vent, and then two days later, I've taken another snapshot, and we've got infiltration um, underneath the plant line. I suppose something that I should say to you is that on the right hand side of the graph is the plant line, and on the left hand side of the graph is the skip row. The third graph obviously shows that water infiltration is more underneath the plant, so the plant is actually capturing the moisture and actually putting the moisture underneath the plant, which makes sense. It's, a lot of plants are designed to actually bring the moisture back towards their, their root base. Um, and the fourth graph is at right at the end of the data set, which is back down in here, so when we're about to harvest. We, one thing we did notice out throughout the season uh, we did have a lot of 2,4-D um, drift, which is uh, not good for cotton. Cotton uh, is very, very sensitive to 2,4-D, uh, and this crop alone had seven uh, drift events. Um, so it was significantly damaged. Um, we had cotton that the leaves should be like the size of my hand, and the leaves were sort of the size of my finger. So that's how much it distorted and then actually affected the crop. So on the, on the top end of the plant, the, um, the terminal had actually died. So we had about a, a, about a foot of dead wood in the centre of the plant and we started getting vegetative growth out through the sides. So that's what we're seeing on top of the, on top of the, the plant, what is happening underneath the soil. That was a good question until we had this, this data um, and no one's really ever thought about what is happening above, is it happening below as well? And that's something that we believe is happening as well. We think that we've killed the tap root with the 2,4-D drips. So if you can look at this graph, um, you can see these moisture bulges just here at 45 centimetres. Can you see that? Yeah. And um, so that's before the rain event. And then after the rain event, you can still see, oh, or right at the end of the seed, you can see a moisture bulge here. You can actually see it in all different configurations. So again, the moisture bulge here, and then the moisture bulge here at the end of the season. So that was quite concerning because that is underneath the plant line and you would actually expect 
underneath the plant line to have more moisture. Again, just showing the same thing at 45 centimetres and about 85 centimetres we're getting moisture bubbles. So, what we believe has happened is that tap roots died, we're actually only getting veg, uh, lateral root growth that is actually feeding the crop. Not much we can do about that, but it's certainly interesting to know that it's actually costing us a lot of, a lot of money. Um, another thing that we, we have no, really noticed with this crop here is that it's only gone to about 90 centimetres, which I would expect a crop to go down to 100, uh, 150 centimetres of depth. So because we've killed the taproot, we've actually restricted ourselves with a lot of um, untamable moisture. Um, so I suppose um, there are some 2D graphs here. I don't know whether we should just show them. Have you got time? Oh, I've got time. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the one in, one out. So this is through that January through to March period. Uh, yes, so um, in the one in one out, it's on the plant line and then the skip is one metre out. In the solid, it's only 50 centimetres out because if we go a metre, we get down the road. But in the single skip and the one in one out, it's one metre. Presumably the red is drying out. It seems to be a lot of them that there's a drying in the skip row, like you see that. Why is that left hand side drying down? Yeah. That's what we think is the 2,4-D damage. So the damage underneath the plant... There's nothing growing on that left-hand side, though, is it? That's, that's the lateral roots coming across. So we've got the tap root underneath, but then, I don't know, if, it's a bit hard to explain. So like with a cotton crop, you'll above the ground you'll have a terminal that goes straight up. But if it gets damaged, it'll actually put out vegetative branches going out like that. So we think the same thing's happening underneath the ground. The tap root's been killed, and then we're getting these, this lateral root growth out the side of it, which would go out on a, a particular angle and wouldn't get access to the, the good moisture underneath the plant line. You got a shovel, what'd you find when you dug them up? We actually dug a, uh, um, a soil pit with a excavator, I didn't get a shovel out, but yeah, we could see the difference in root, root growth. Um, we could free, physically feel the moisture underneath the plant um, and there was more root mass in the, in the skips. So it's um, just something that we, we observed. And this is the solid. And it just basically all shows the same thing. Um, so if there's any questions about what we've found. You're only using sing, single, having multiple replicates of probes? Uh, so this is only, so there's two probes, it's a multi-probe. So it's one in the, in the row and one in the skip. Yeah. Um, it's only replicated once. But, so, yeah. So this was just a, um, a field day, of, I'm promoting Bulgar 3 plot, which is a new plot that's about to be released. So we did 20 hectares with the trials, and this was just one thing that we wanted to show, how a, dry, a moisture probe can fit into a drying situation. Because ultimately, I think that um, the drill and drop will fit into the, into the drying situation to help people forecast for uh, putting fertiliser on, knowing how much moisture they've got, um, PIX application, which is a growth regulator, um, yield forecasting, and um, yeah, forward selling. So I'm trying to show, get some data together to try and start selling these probes in the driving situation. Where's that 248 in there? There Don't get me wrong, some cotton growers do spread themselves out too. That's not all the matters. <laughs> because cotton is so sensitive to it. Um, just a little bit in the boom, like they could have been spraying it yeah, in the winter, not clean the boom out properly, it can cause significant damage to the crop. It's very sensitive. Any further questions? Oh, thanks,